Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. During the question and answer session, please press star 1. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the meeting over to Clint Hastings. Thank you. You may begin. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate your participation in the FY 2020 uh, Technical CDF5 Program and ACA Program Technical Assistance Q&A webinar. My name is Clint Hastings. I'm the Associate Program Manager for Native Initiatives here at the CDFI Fund. I'm joined by several of my colleagues on the line today. So I'm going to go ahead and give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Amber Kuhar Bell. I'm the Program Manager for the CDFI and Native Initiatives Program. Hi, my name is Megan Carrero, and I'm a Portfolio Manager for CDFI Program and Native Initiatives. Hi, my name is Matthew Pickering. I'm also a Program uh, Portfolio Manager at the CDFI and NACA Program. Hi, this is Tanya Vardivarian, um, Associate Program Manager. All right, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. I'm just going to make a few brief remarks, high-level remarks, um, about the Technical Assistance Assistance Agreement, and then open the line up for Q&A. But before I get into uh, the meat of the presentation, the introduction, I want to give everyone, everyone a reminder of where they can find some helpful information about their assistance agreement, including the documents that I'm going to share today. If you go to our website, cdfifund.gov, up to programs and training, programs, either CFI program or native initiatives, depending on uh, if you're a CFI program or NACA program recipient. Click there. Hopefully you've got a faster internet connection than I do. All right, you're going to come to the CFI program landing page. You can scroll down to the bottom and click on this step four circle, closing a disbursement. <clears throat> Here you'll see a list of documents. Okay. There we go. Um, the presentation that I'll be using to provide my introductory remarks today is this Getting Acquainted with Your FY 2020 TA Award Assistance Agreement a document. Also, uh, if you want to see a template of the assistance agreement, which you probably won't need since you already have yours, um, it's also located here. I'll also post a recording of this Q&A webinar up here in this area um, within a couple of days. So if you want to come back and review something that's said or perhaps share with another member of your staff, uh, it'll be here for your use. All right, great. On your screen, you should see a series of six boxes that outline the uh, process in which we distribute and then eventually execute your assistance agreement and distribute payment. So at this point, uh, most of our TA recipients should have received an email notification that their assistance agreement is available for electronic signature. Um, assuming you've received that email, uh, you can get online, log into your account, review the assistance agreement. Please don't just sign the assistance agreement. Uh, review it, make sure you're familiar with all the terms and conditions, the program goals and measures, or the performance goals and measures, I'm sorry. Uh, just make sure that all of the data is correct. At that point, once you're comfortable with the uh, assistance agreement, you can go ahead and sign, sign it electronically. If it's uh, noted as applicable in your assistance agreement, you may need to upload a certificate of good standing, which you'll attach to your award record in Amos. At that point, you'll electronically sign. 
please don't uh, print off the assistance agreement, sign it and in ink, scan it and upload it. That happens a few times every year. We don't need that. The electronic signature is sufficient. Um, once that's done, we'll go through a brief compliance review process here at the CFI fund. Once that process is completed, the CDFI program manager will countersign the assistance agreement and upload a signed version of the cover page. Once you receive notice that the assistance agreement has been executed, you will receive an email and then typically within five to 10 days, you should receive um, payment of your, uh, your initial payment. Okay, on your screen is the cover page of your assistance agreement. This contains all the basic information about your organization. Um, please verify that the name of your organization is correct, the DUNS and the EIN, your address. And if um, you see any errors, notice any errors, just log in, send us a service request asking us to update or correct the erroneous information. Uh, okay. This is kind of the second half of the cover page down towards the bottom. You'll see two important fields, the total amount of your award and the initial TA payment in this field right here. Uh, please note, please be aware that you are required uh, per the terms of your assistance agreement to expend 90% of that initial payment within the first year of the period of performance. Um, so if you see that and you go, oh, I'm not sure my organization is going to be able to expend 90% of that initial payment, reach out to us, request a modification, say, hey, let's update that initial payment. It's not going to be a big deal, pretty quick process, and we'll get you set up for success. Okay, from there, I just want to give a high level overview of the performance goals and measures that are contained in your assistance agreement. For our technical assistance recipients, they're all pretty straightforward. If you're in, well, let me say all technical assistance recipients are going to have a performance goal and measure PGM that requires them, one, to expend 90% of the initial payment within the first year of the period of performance and then expend 100% of the technical assistance by the end of the period of performance. Then from there, if you're an uncertified technical assistance recipient, there's going to be a requirement that your organization is certified by the end of the period of performance, and then has also submitted its certification application by the end of the second year of the period of performance. Finally, if you are a sponsoring entity, which is a category of recipients that is only applicable to the NACA program, your organization is going to be required to incorporate, uh, legally establish the organization that will become a certified CDFI within the first year of the period of performance. Okay, one thing I mentioned is the requirement that you expend um, all the funds by the end of the period of performance. It's very, very important to note that you must expend all of the technical assistance within one of the authorized technical assistance activities. You should see that list on the screen right now. It's compensation, both personal services and fringe benefits, training and education, travel, professional services, equipment, supplies, and again, for sponsoring entities only, incorporation costs. One important thing to note when it comes to the TA authorized activities is that let's say in your application you stated, I want to spend uh, $75,000 on uh, compensation, uh, $20,000 on training, $5,000 on travel, so on and so forth. Um, in your application, but then down the line you realize, oh wait, I need to, uh, my priorities have changed. I need to uh, repurpose, um, not repurpose, but you know, use, use the 
technical assistance for something other than I thought um, I initially would. That's okay as long as your uh, different expenses are within one of these authorized activity categories. So if you plan on spending $10,000 in training and education, but you only need to spend $8,000 and you need to bump up another category, professional services or equipment, that is fine as long as it's one of the authorized activities. You do not need to request an amendment or receive permission from the CD5 fund to do so. However, if you're you know, unsure if one of your potential expenses is gonna be in one of these categories, please feel free to reach out to us. We can give you some guidance. We can make sure you're on the right track in expending all the funds in an authorized technical assistance category. Finally, I, I made note about this earlier in my uh, comments regarding the initial payment, but after you review your assistance agreement and before you sign it, if you have questions about um, some of the terms and conditions, you think something might be wrong, uh, you want to make a change to something like the initial payment that would affect one of your pg &Ms, please do so. Please reach out to us via service request and ask for clarification and or request that change before you sign the agreement. It's much, much easier to make a change before you sign the agreement much quicker. Um, we can't promise that your requested change or modification will be approved, uh, but it's just a much simpler and cleaner process to make a modification before the assistance agreement has been executed. So those are the high level points I wanted to hit on today. Uh, at this point, let's go ahead and open it up for Q&A. One request that we have is if you've got a question, do it via phone if possible. The chat box is a little bit difficult for us to use given our um, technical limitations working from home right now. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1. You'll be prompted to record your name. To withdraw your request, please press star two. Again, if you do have a question, please press star one and record your name. We do have a question, one moment. Tamika, your line is now open. Oh, hi. I wanted to know what or what how what is the process or the time wait for the assistance agreement to show up in the portal? I went in today to look at the um, agreement and it's not listed there. So I submitted a request, um, but don't know how long it's going to be before we can see the agreement. Uh, what's the name of your organization? Manatee Community Federal Credit Union. So I, um, I, I'm not aware of the specific reason um, as to why your organization's assistance agreement hasn't been posted yet, but we have um, sent out some communications to a few organizations, well, actually to quite a few organizations this year um, regarding their name as it's listed in, assist in AMOS and um, in SAM.gov, um, we're trying to do some cleanup to make sure those names match the, the organization name listed in Amos and SAM.gov. So it's possible, actually probable, if you haven't received your assistance agreement yet, that um, we're trying to clean that up before posting your assistance agreement. Um, we're working on that actively and hope to have it resolved fairly soon. But once we're off the call, I can check in and confirm that that is an issue that is uh, slowing down posting of your organization's assistance agreement. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, as a reminder, if you do have any questions or comments, please press star one and record your name. Again, please press star one. Michael Yorb, your line is now open. Yes, I wanted to find out, is the webinar tomorrow the same content that we're going through today? It's going to be very similar. Um, just the only difference is it's geared towards our FA uh, assistance agreement recipients. So if you're a TA recipient, this is a call for you. 
if um, you're an FA recipient, the call tomorrow is going to be for your organization. They'll be Thank similar you. in nature. The, the uses of awards and things like that are a little bit different. The PGMs are different. It's just applicable to which category of, of recipient and organizations in. Thank you. Hmm? I show no questions. And again, as a reminder, if you do have any further questions or comments, please press star one and record your name. I show no questions. Looks like one may be coming through. One moment, please. Tony, your line is now open. Great, thank you. My question uh, deals with after the documents have been returned and signed and reviewed, what's the turnaround time for you to sign off on the uh, assistance agreement and then provide the first level of funding? Thanks. Um, so we, we try to get the turnaround as quickly as possible. Um, our usual effort is to review the certificate of good standing if it's applicable to your organization and do our first level of approval within a day. From there, we send it on to our compliance team that does a basic check for every organization to make sure they're you know, not having any non-compliance issues with any other awards if they had any. Um, that usually takes a couple of days. I would say the turnaround on it's going to be, you know, five to ten business days on the signature um, on average. And then from there, recipients typically report receiving the funds within five to ten days. But once we get to the point of the payment, that's a little bit out of our control. Um, so it may come in quicker, may take a little bit longer. Uh, but generally we say, once you've received notice that the assistance agreement's been executed, um, give it 10 days. And if you haven't seen those payments uh, hit your bank account within 10 business days, uh, reach out to us via service request. Okay, great. Thank you. Michael Riley, your line is now open. Yes, thank you. I actually have two questions. The first is, um, when does the actual reporting period begin? Does that begin when we actually receive the money or do we wait till the start of a new calendar year? And then the second question is, when, how do we go about getting, how does the second payment come in a year down the road? Is there any process for that? So I'll take the first question and then I'll let another member of our team address the second question. With regards to the, the first question about the reporting period, it basically starts on the date of the award announcement um, so you can, um, you know, charge authorized expenses to the grant beginning with the award announcement date, and you're going to be, you know, reporting um, on your activity from uh, the start of the the announce date to the end, end of the period of performance. Your first reports are going to come to, there are going to be the financial statement audit report and the single audit report, if it's applicable. Um, those come due um, nine months after the first fiscal year closes um, after the announced date. And then from there, you're going to have some performance reports. Those are just um, financial reports mm -hmm. in what we call the year zero, which is, you know, like I said, uh, from the period of the award announcement date to the end of your kind of active fiscal year. And then from um, the award announced date to the end of your like first full fiscal year after the announcement date, you're going to do some performance reporting. Great. Thank you. And that schedule, I should say, um, refer to your assistance agreement. If you haven't received it yet, once you get it, take a look at it. Um, it's going to be very clearly outlined. I realize my explanation is probably a little bit convoluted, but it's very clearly outlined in um, the assistance agreement. You've got individual reporting schedules for each of the applicable reports that are going to be due for your organization. Thank you. And again, as a reminder, if you do have any further questions or comments, 
Please press star one and record your name again. Please press star one. And then I realized there was a second question. Is there another person on the team that would like to uh, address that? If not, I can. Yeah, this is Amber. Um, hi. So with regard to your subsequent payments, um, you don't have to wait a year to request a subsequent payment. All you need to do is wait until 90% of your initial payment has been expended. And then um, you need to go into AMIS and your award, and there's a button to request um, your subsequent payments. Um, Megan, you want to walk them through maybe the subsequent payment request? Uh, yeah, sure. I actually just pulled up the training manual. Uh, if you go to AMIS and then the AMIS training materials, you'll see a bunch of hyperlinks, and the subsequent payment request submission manual will be in the first the first batch of hyperlinks. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, so if you go there, you basically just log into your AMOS portal, select your organization, uh, and you will have to be the authorized representative of your organization to make the payment request. Um, and then it'll just walk you through it step by step of your awards, which okay. one you're making, things like that. So, um, yeah, you'll find that on the AMIS, on the AMIS page, and it'll walk you through it. Great. Thank you. Um, before we move on to the next question, I just wanted to let the um, woman know from Manatee that your um, assistance agreement is um, available on your AMIS account. Uh, and so just to make sure you're going to the right spot, you will um, need to find your award record um, for your 2020 TA award. And then in the award record page under notes and attachments is where you'll find your um, assistance agreement. And that's for everyone on the call as well. Our next question comes from Tamika. Your line is now open. Oh, hi. Um, just another question. How are the payments not just one disbursement? It's in multiple disbursements? It depends on what your organization requested in its application. Um, some organizations request the full amount of the award in their initial payments and some don't. Um, so check the cover page of your assistance agreement. It's going to have those initial payments listed. Um, and so long as an organization is comfortable that they're going to be able to expend at least 90% of that initial payment in the first year of the period of performance, then you know, there's no issue with, uh, with having the entire award in the first first payment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments, please press star 1 and record your name. I show no further questions. Let's give it another minute or so. And while we're waiting, if you do have a question or comment, please press star 1 and record your name. And I would just say while we're waiting for maybe a couple final questions to come in, uh, please make sure you're comfortable with all the terms in your assistance agreement. Um, even if you think they're fine or you just have a question, reach out to us and confirm before you go ahead and sign and we execute that assistance agreement. It is just um, so much more simple for everybody involved and quick for everybody involved to uh, work out any potential questions or issues, maybe something that you think is an issue you might figure out that is totally cool, we don't need to make any changes, but let's just get really comfortable with your assistance agreement and the requirements before it is executed. Um, you can do that via service request. Um, you can always shoot us an email if you've got our uh, contact information, but we're here to resolve any issues, whether they're before or after you execute the assistance agreement, but our goal uh, is to get you comfortable before we've got the assistance agreement signed. 
we do have a question that came through from William Vance. Your line is now open. Yes, I'd like to clarify that the legal opinion is not required unless there is a yes in the box next to that section. That's correct. Thank you. And the table of contents, yeah, the only thing that's going to be applicable to your assistance agreement is uh, if in the table of contents, the word yes is listed out to the right in that right column of the table of contents. Thank you. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. I show no further questions. All right, well, I'll open it up to the other members of our team, Amber or anyone else. Are there any final comments you'd like to make if we don't have any additional questions? We do have one um, more question yeah, only... just came through. Did you want to take the well, question let's first? Let's go ahead and take the question. Thank you. Tony, your line is now open. Thank you. I noticed uh, in your list of eligible expenditures, expenses, you indicated that incorporation costs was only applicable to a sponsoring entity. If in our award we were intending to create a new entity uh, to expand our capacity to do lending, would the cost of creating that new entity be an eligible expense? Or is that line item only applicable if you yeah. are? It's only going to be applicable if you're a sponsoring entity. Um, and if you're a CDFI program recipient, um, you mm -hmm. cannot be a sponsoring entity. So the organization that applied for and received the award needs to expend the TA funds um, to build the capacity of the organization itself not create a new organization or support the activities of another organization. Um, so if you've got some questions or concerns about that, I would highly recommend reaching out to us via service request. Um, after the call, we can work through and make sure you get comfortable with, um, with the authorized activities. Great. Thank you. So this is Amber. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that when you sign your assistance agreement, um, there's a checkbox that says that you have that you have updated your SAM.gov um, accounting information. That's very important because that's the information listed in SAM.gov, your bank account information. That's where the money is going to go. Um, so please make sure that your bank account information in SAM.gov is accurate before you check that box. All right, are there any additional questions? I show no further questions. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and call it an afternoon. Thanks everyone so much for participating in our FY 2020 TNA Q&A webinar. Uh, if you've got any questions that you think of after the um, uh, webinar is over, please feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or um, uh, submit a service request via your AMOS account. And just make sure you get comfortable with that agreement before you sign it. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. This can conclude today's conference call. Thank you for, for, for participating. You may disconnect at this time.